With the placement of iPads in the hands of all 860 students at Buck Lodge Middle School, the shape of education might never be the same again. The rollout of the wildly popular digital devices in four Prince George's Title I middle schools, the largest such rollout in the country, was an occasion for delighted students and their teachers to discover a resource unlike any other. Multiple apps at their fingertips, a built-in camera, a mobile typing pad for sending homework electronically, a musical instrument. What more could a kid or a teacher ask for? Girls, what do you like about this thing? I mean, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, they really are. I like the fact that we can take notes with them because I hate writing, so I can just type it. I'm faster at typing than writing. How they can't wait to um, decorate their covers that they're going to have, how they can't wait to take them from class to class. Remember, we're just in the beginning of this. So they are totally excited, and excitement translates into higher achievement. It's a way to capture and engage students. I had a lot of students, eighth grade boys, who weren't interested, who weren't going to write, who put the electronics in their hand, suddenly they're able to text, suddenly they're able to interact with the information. It is a tool for instruction. It doesn't replace a teacher. It enhances what the teacher's already doing. For some teachers, that promise of transformed instruction was initially met with a healthy dose of skepticism. And then the first thing you're gonna do is if you go back to your home page, you'll have what looks like a tablet and it says notes. If you open notes up, it just looks like a lined piece of paper. So you are then going to type three, or you're gonna tell me the first app that's your favorite app. And to be very honest, I was very scared at first because I just thought we were gonna have another tool in the room that could distract the kids. But then I found that there are a lot of voice recording applications. There are actually a few translating applications um, that will be very, very helpful. So for those kids that may be too nervous to get in the front of the room and speak in front of the entire class or so that I don't have to take class time to take them out in the hallway individually, they'll actually be able to record themselves, shoot that in an email straight to me. So then I can grade it at home, I can grade it right there in the classroom, and I'll just receive the emails on the spot. So while the iPad's instructional role is still evolving, acceptance is already growing and engagement sky high. What it seems to be is that this is another manipulative, except in a math class. Um, there are things, there are apps that you can do. Uh, there's a number line app that's great for putting things in order, but then this is going to be another tool so if the kids are going to do a research project, they can find real data. We talked about that at the math department. Um, getting some data and then having some histograms, box and whisker plots, stem and leaf, so that it's relevant to them. You think this will help you get better grades? Yeah. You're probably a good student already. It'll keep you good, right? Yeah. What is not in question with the iPads, which are now stored at the school, is that the students will master its manipulations in record time. These kids are going to be experts before I am. They know a lot. In fact, I always double check them. Am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? And they're like, yeah, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Congratulations and good luck to the students at Buck Lodge Middle School with their brand new iPads. For channels 96 and 38, this is Dave Zarin reporting.